Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. I'm very grateful for the time that I've had to reflect on this topic and the blessing it's been in my life. So thank you, Brother Clausen. I pray that the Spirit will be here, um, that we might all be edified together. My husband, Chaplain Spencer Cooper, recently returned home from a six and a half month deployment with the Utah Air National Guard to Qatar. This was our third deployment together, but it was our first with children. Knowing how difficult deployments are, I was very nervous for how our three young children would do during such a long, a long time without their daddy. I know the Lord helped and blessed us through so many people around us and through the Spirit to ease our children's hearts and minds and to help us get through this challenging time. Today, I would like to share with you some of the experiences we had during this deployment as well as, as some of the tender mercies of the Lord that we felt and witnessed. Sometimes in my life, the Lord seems to bombard me with information on a given topic from all different sources when he wants me to really get the message. One of these instances was towards the beginning of Spencer's deployment. This time, the theme was angels. Little did I know how precious a tender mercy this theme would become. It started just a few weeks after Spencer left when his mom came to stay with me and the kids for a few days. I was having an especially hard day, feeling the load of this long deployment and the weight of caring for our children on my own and running the house and our preschool and trying to juggle it all by myself. My mother-in-law was very perceptive of the stress I was feeling and lovingly made me sit down and take a minute to relax as she helped my kids give me a foot massage and then sent me to rest as she tucked in my children. During that evening, I remember feeling like I was surrounded by angels in the form of my husband's mother and my own little children and feeling of their support and relief they administered. That was simply a beautiful glimpse into how so many angels would help me and my family through the entire deployment. One other instance I had happened as I was reading in LDS Living. The message of the article touched me so deeply and literally changed my life forever. Sister Wendy Watson Nelson said, the prophet Joseph Smith declared that if we live up to our privilege, the angels will not be able to be restrained from being our associates. She said, as we keep our covenants, we can ask for angels to help us, literally. In a recent conference address, Elder Jeffrey R. Holland counseled so simply, yet so powerfully, ask for angels to help you. President Joseph F. Smith clarified who those helping angels are. He said, when messengers are sent to minister to the inhabitants of this earth, they are not strangers but from the ranks of our kindred and friends. In like manner, our fathers and mothers, brothers, sisters, and friends who have passed away from this earth, having been faithful and worthy to enjoy these rights and privileges, may have a mission given them to visit their relatives and friends upon the earth again. After learning this, I felt very clearly that I needed to ask specifically for angels to help watch over me and my family in Springville, Utah, as well as Spencer in the Middle East. Before this deployment, I was quite nervous about being alone with our children at night. Given the old Victorian style of our home, we had many doors leading to the outside, a number of them laced with glass. I was so nervous, in fact, that I had my brother-in-law install a simple security system before Spencer left so I could find some sort of comfort in feeling like I had some kind of protection. I faithfully made sure the system was on each night and, and hoped it would not go off as we slept, signaling an intrusion. But after I got the message from the Lord that I not only could, but needed to ask for the help of angels, I stopped relying on the security system and instead felt the miraculous power 
of protection from angels whom I asked the Lord to send. It was so clear to me that I just needed to ask. So I began asking through prayer for the Lord to send his angels to watch over us and to literally guard our doors and protect us. I envisioned my grandfather and Spencer's grandfather and many other loved ones who have passed on, literally standing guard and watching out for my little family. I felt that they were there. I no longer needed to use the crutch of the security system because I then realized I had it installed based on fear, and now I felt total trust in the Lord. I prayed many times for angels to be round about us, and I know the Lord heard and answered my prayers. I felt for myself my own personal conviction of the scripture in Isaiah. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Recently, Elder Holland spoke of the ministering of angels. He said, when we speak of those who are instruments in the hand of God, we are reminded that not all angels are from the other side of the veil. Some of them we walk with and talk with here now every day. Some of them reside, reside in our own neighborhoods. My beloved brothers and sisters, I testify of angels, both the heavenly and the mortal kind. In doing so, I am testifying that God never leaves us alone, never leaves us unaided in the challenges that we face, nor will he, so long as time shall last or the earth shall stand. Or there shall be one man or woman or child upon the face thereof to be saved. I am so grateful for the help of heavenly angels as well as mortal angels during this deployment. I am so thankful the Lord guided our family to the ward we lived in during that time as well. I truly felt the spirit of Zion in our ward through the service rendered and offered by others. So many people were angels in our lives as they mowed our lawn each week, tended our kids to preserve my sanity, let me cry on their shoulder when I felt overwhelmed, brought treats for us to enjoy, and just smiled and said hi and showed that they cared. They truly were the angels and instruments in God's hands that my family and I needed and so appreciated. I am also profoundly, I am also profoundly grateful to so many of you who, unbeknownst to yourselves, have lovingly guided and taught me so much over the years. As Spencer and I have attended these special chaplain conferences, I have paid very close attention to your advice and counsel given as you shared your personal experiences with how to not only survive but thrive during a deployment. Thank you for suggesting Friday night movie nights, taking advantage of grants offered to my children for extracurricular activities, taking the time to care for myself, and being comfortable letting people around me know what specific help my family and I needed. Many of you were so influential in my preparation for this past deployment, and I thank you. Another school of preparation for me was a year before Spencer's six-month deployment, when he went to an out-of-state training for six weeks. This was a special tender mercy that we saw as our family's preparation period for his upcoming longer deployment. This was a hard time for me personally. I was not very happy because I did not easily allow myself to see the Lord's tender mercies. My seven-year-old daughter at the time said, Mom, are you only mean when dad is gone? <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but it was very painful. It was then that I realized how serious I take life sometimes and how challenging that time was for me and my family. And I knew we would not survive a six-month deployment if things did not change, mostly me. 
Before this recent deployment, we talked a lot as a family, and I told our kids that I needed their help to keep me laughing so I wouldn't take life so seriously and turn not so nice again. Through the truly tender mercies of the Lord, I drew strength from the enabling power of the atonement and felt of God's love and tender care. Elder Bednar said, the Lord's tender mercies are the very personal and individualized blessings, strength, protection, assurances, guidance, loving kindnesses, consolation, support, and spiritual gifts, which we receive from and because of and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Truly the Lord suits his mercies according to the conditions of the children of men. He went on to say, one of the ways whereby the Savior comes to each of us is through his abundant and tender mercies. For instance, as you and I face challenges and tests in our lives, the gift of faith and, a, and an appropriate sense of personal confidence that reaches beyond our own capacity are two examples of the tender mercies of the Lord. I know that because of the Lord's tender mercies, and especially due to the enabling power of his atonement, we were very blessed during this time. I testify, as, as was recorded in Psalms, the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. In closing, Sister Carol Stevens recently quoted a woman struggling with a mental illness who talked about the Lord's tender mercies in her life. She said, they serve as a guiding light as I navigate through hard times. This guiding light is always there. It is up to us to open our eyes and hearts to recognize the Lord's tender mercies as he is so willing to help us through our difficult times. Had I chosen to see the tender mercies of the Lord during the short six-week separation while Spencer was at training, it may not have been such a difficult time for me. I am eternally grateful for the strength and light that came as I chose to see and recognize the Lord's hand in our lives and his tender mercies during Spencer's recent deployment. May we all have eyes that see and hearts that feel the Lord's tender mercies during the difficult times in our lives, as well as the not so difficult times. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.